We are live. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Adam Clark here with Noah Karen doing another Wellness Wednesday. We've been doing this for the past, geez, it's been, been what, two months now? I believe two months. We've bring, been bringing you guys a, a new topic um, each week. Um, so a, an important topic in health and wellness anywhere from we've talked about sleep. We've talked about last week, we talked about pelvic floor health, which was a which was a great conversation. We had a couple of guests on um, talking about pelvic floor. Um, we we're talking about uh, meal prep, uh, things that in everyday life is going to help you. Um, you're going to get some some sort of information that you can uh, implement. Um, into your life. And, and we, we really like doing these. Uh, but the best way to, to uh, impact more people that we'd really appreciate if you ask questions, number one, in the Facebook Live, but also share it. Uh, if you could share it, we would, we would greatly appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, just, just press the share button so more people can see it. If you watch this later on, uh, please feel free to, to um, go ahead and ask a question. Um, because uh, we will answer it later on. But uh, perfect. So Noah, you ready to rock? I'm ready. Ready. So today's topic is morning and nighttime routine. So I'm going to, let's start with this. So morning routine. Take me through a typical morning for you, you know, from the moment you wake up until the the when you go out the door so it definitely depends on the day as i got a pretty crazy schedule with it uh school and everything but for the most part if i don't have to get up super early for a, for a class i always start um either either with a little workout um you maybe like half an hour 45 minutes depending how busy i am um and and then i go to um, breakfast and a cup of coffee every morning get that get that um out of the way and then I spend um, a few minutes, a few minutes, um, uh, kind of to myself, um, just some sort of basic, just reflections in my mind, that sort of stuff. And then, then I start getting ready for my day. And um, it's probably right around 6:30, uh, 6:40, 6:45. I end up getting ready for my day. Um, and then I have class usually at eight if I don't work in the morning. And so from about I'll end up getting ready about 7.15. So about 7.15 to about 7.45, I take the half an hour to collect myself, prepare for my day, looking at ahead what I have for classes and, and what will be going on. Um, and that's kind of my, not my, my basic routine. Um, the key ones, I, I, even if I don't get a workout in the morning, um, I usually get one later on in the day. But um, the key things for me is getting, getting um, the time to be prepared that little half an hour before and my breakfast. That's the big thing. I noticed if I don't have breakfast, I'm not, I'm not feeling the same. Um, and those are, those are kind of the key parts to mine. When I, when I, if I have a perfect routine, like i only, I, I sometimes struggle with this, but when I first wake up, I do a little, a little guided meditation sometimes. Um, I haven't, I haven't done, to be honest, I haven't done one of those in a while. I've been, um, I just said, I hadn't thought about it. I need to get better at it, but that perfect routine. I wake up, start with a little guided meditation before grabbing um, any outside stimulus, just kind of focusing in and, and all that sort of stuff. But what about you? What's your, uh, what's your, uh, so the, the, I mean, I, I wake up quite early on most days. Um, so it used to be three nineteen, but I pushed it to three 30, um, three 30. So if I'm here, um, at, at, we have 5 a.m. sessions. So I do, I do 5 a.m. sessions three days a week. You do it one day a week. And then Wednesdays, we, we don't have 5 a.m. sessions. So I wake up at 3.30. Uh, one thing that I need to figure out a, a way to change is um, I'm, I'm right on my phone immediately, right on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think one thing that um, I need to change, because if, if that's if I go right on my phone, if I go right on emails, Facebook, then I'm already jumping in. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not controlling the day. I'm allowing the, the emails and the, the Facebook and social media and all that to control me. So I need to figure out a way to, um, to not do that. Uh, but after I get up, so I get up um, and I, I pound a, pound a ton of water. Um, I have one of these of water. So a big thing of that. I have my athletic greens um, in water. So I, I drink a lot of water in the morning and then the coffee maker's already going. I already have my breakfast made. So I warm that up. Um, and then I go, 
Um, you know, I've already had my water, had my athletic greens, and I go sit in the chair. Um, I go kind of through uh, financials for the day, and then I do a little bit of reading. Um, and one thing I, I'd like to implement more um, is a little bit more movement, a little bit more stretching. But at the same time, I'm waking up that early. So I don't, I don't want to put too much into my morning routine because I find that a lot of us, you know, oh, you need to do this in your morning routine, this in your morning routine, this in your morning routine. Well, we can't always fit all that in. Um, so you, you really need to find something um, that works for you. Uh, and some of the things that I, I want to talk about today. Um, so we talked about our morning routines, but why is a morning routine important, right? Well, first, number one, it sets the tone for your day. It sets the tone for your day. So if you are pressing snooze all the time, what kind of tone does that set? What kind of tone does that set? It, it, it sets the tone that you're not ready for the day, that um, you're going to allow the day to control you and not you controlling the day. Um, you know, if you have a morning routine, why is it important? Uh, lower stress levels. So studies have shown, um, you know, when you're in control, right, you have lower, lower stress levels. And I know we talked a lot about stress, but, um, you know, that this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Um, you're more productive, right? When you're, when you're not feeling rushed, when you're feeling rushed, what emotions, you know, go through your body? What are you, what are you feeling, right? Your, your blood pressure's up. You're feeling like you, you forgot something. You're feeling like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do today? So you're already in that kind of fight or flight mode, right? So you're already in that, like you're, you're on edge. Whereas when you ease into the day, you're controlling it, you're controlling it. So um, it makes a huge difference. Um, and, and I took this from, from a book that, that I'm reading right now, you're reading as well uh, from Limitless, Jim Quick. And he's a brain health expert, uh, learning expert. And he says, morning routines are important. And it's really, you are the thermostat, not the thermometer. So you're controlling things, right? You're not allowing your environment to control you. So that's why a morning routine um, is super important. There's a, there's a ton of books written on it. Um, what is a good morning routine? So we can all improve, right? We can all improve, but um, usually involves something like this, right? You're going to hydrate, right? Because after you sleep, you're, you're, you know, you need to get hydrated. Um, some sort of relaxation kind of meditation, mindfulness exercise. That's a good thing. Uh, movement. Movement's important. Um, it could be, it could be as simple as, you know, doing 10 squats, 10 push-ups, right. Or, or doing, you know, 20 jumping jacks, some sort of movement. It's good to get the blood flowing. Um, it, it's been shown that, that doing something creative, whether it's reading, writing, just something creative, really get the brain fired up for the day. And then nutrition. I mean, for me, um, like you said, breakfast, uh, is super important. I'm a, I'm a strong believer in breakfast. I know, I know that, you know, if it, breakfast doesn't work for you, that's fine. But breakfast for me is important. That starts the day right for me. Um, and it does for you. But um, I, if there's one thing I can say about morning routines, you know, there's tons of books out there. It can be very overwhelming, but you just got to start with one thing. What is one thing you're going to do? Um, and, and write that down and set your environment up for it. So if you want to eat a nutritious breakfast, then you then make it either make it ahead of time or have everything out to make it right. It's not, just not going to happen. If you want to exercise in the morning, put your workout clothes outside yeah. right? or, or not outside, not outside your house, <laughs> but uh, put your put your workout workout clothes out. Um, if you want to read, what do you think? So are you going to go to the coffee machine every day? Exactly. You are. So put that book right next to it. It's that reminder. Um, so that's, you know, if you want to implement those things, if we want to meditate more, then, then we need to set up our environment for that, whether that's, you know, have a space for it, um, whether it's having a checklist that we see every day. Um, I mean, that's, that's how we can improve if we want to do something like that. So uh, morning routine, super important. Um, but, but um, you know, we, we talk about um, simple, not easy. It can be easy by, by doing the habit trackers, right? By doing the, the checks, by yeah. checking it off. So, um, but, but my advice would be not to do too much. Um, anything anything in, in terms of morning routine that you'd like to add? Do we have any questions coming in about morning routine? Um, we'd love to hear um, if anyone um, out there is, 
I, I think there's a few people watching, you know, what is your morning routine? What's your go-to? What's your struggles? Uh, we'd love to hear, hear those things. And um, yeah. One thing I find that is, is as you kind of mentioned um, a little bit earlier, uh, when the feeling rushed in the morning, um, I, what I find that to lead to is I do not feel focused. Like focus is a big thing for me, especially with class and stuff. Yeah. Um, and you, you touched on this and, and it's all about being productive and that sort of stuff. But I find that, um, my mornings need to be super structured and when they're not, if I'm rushing from one place to another, which I time, I can't control from time to time. I, I can't control all those things. Um, like, like, um, running from one class to another or something. If I don't have that focus, I am not going to be able to pay attention to my best ability during class um you might not be able to if you're talking with people you're not you, you're just not gonna be your best self i don't think if you're not focused and that's something i think adding structure if you feel rushed in the morning um if you feel like there's some things you uh, you don't feel prepared for the day or you're having trouble like focusing or things along those lines i think you need to focus on that morning routine a little bit more mm -hmm. um but yeah that's, that's if you if you're right now questioning is my morning routine is it, is it good enough? Is it adequate? I think start paying attention to how you feel at the beginning of your day and through your day. If you feel unprepared or unfocused or anything like that, definitely think uh, taking a little more um, uh, focus on your morning routine will help you. Yeah, absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head and, and I can't stress this enough. Don't try to do too much. We try to do too much. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to juice. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to read. Well, you're probably not going to do all of that. Um, it's just not, it's not really doable unless yeah. you have endless amounts of time in the morning. So um, just, just focus on the, the small, small things um, and, and focus on being consistent. If you can do that, then, then you're, that's a good thing. Um, so that's, uh, that's morning routine. But another thing we, I want to talk a little bit about today is nighttime routine, because what do all people have in common, right? They go to, well, not everyone, but they go to bed at night and they wake up in the morning, right? Some people that work overnight, they don't go to bed at night, but you know what I mean? Everything, everything else varies. Uh, amount of sleep, the routines, things like that. But everyone goes to bed, everyone wakes up. Um, so nighttime routine right? Your morning is set up by your nighttime routine. If you have a poor nighttime routine, right? And that's probably going to set you up for a poor morning, All right? If your nighttime routine is, you know, you're on your devices, you're, you stay up late, you know, you're going to feel tired going into the morning routine, going into the morning, then your morning routine is going to suffer, right? So it all goes together. And that's why nighttime routine um, is super important. And couple of things, um, you know, if you're, if you're listening right now, what is one of your biggest struggles? I think one of my biggest struggles is uh, getting off the phone, getting off the devices. Um, it seems so silly, but um, I wear my blue light glasses, but still just, just putting the device away, um, putting the phone away um, and, and just, you know, having some relaxed time, whether it's reading, whether it's listening to some music, uh, stretching, meditation, doing some relax relaxation activity. Um, so your nighttime routine, Noah, what, what does, what does that look like? So, uh, I need, I think, I think a key thing in a, in a nighttime routine is consistency. I think, um, your body, even if you're not aware of it is very aware of your surroundings and what's going on. Um, so, if you are struggling with sleep, creating a routine that you do every single night will just prepare the body to go to sleep. Um, so for me, uh, I have, I obviously, I uh, try to avoid studying late at night, but uh, there's a lot of times I can't help that. Right. Um, and that would translate, I'm not, I'm sure half people aren't, uh, a lot of people watching aren't studying late at night, but that can translate to um, whether it's super, like you're working on work too late, you're checking the emails too late. I make sure, I make sure I have a time that I'm shutting that all off by. Usually it's eight o'clock. Um, sometimes if I get a big exam or something coming up, it will be closer to closer to nine. Um, hopefully never later than that. On occasion, I make some exceptions, which I shouldn't do, but I, I, I got to do sometimes. But right. so I, shut, I set my deadline where I'm not doing anything. I put my away my um, electronics for a little bit. Um, so that's probably right around 
eight 30, I'll kind of start putting those away and not really, not really looking at those as much. I'll put my homework and stuff away at like eight o'clock. Um, and in that, in that time frame, I'll do some sort of, um, something to like decompress sort of whether that's just like chatting with uh, my roommate and we were like, we have a cup of tea or something that we're just like kind of winding down. So, uh, for a while we were doing yoga each night. Um, um, so it doesn't, I, and I say consistency. Um, so I don't do the same thing every night I would say, but I have the same wind down time and I'm making sure I'm not doing something that's like either st uh, super stimulating for my brain or my body. Um, mm -hmm. so I try to avoid working out super late at night. Um, I try to avoid, yeah. um, um, doing critical thinking late, late at night. Right. Um, um, yeah. So if you had a, if you had a checklist, right, then you would, you would basically have a relaxation activity and that could be a bunch of different things. It could exactly. be reading, it could be yoga, it could be stretch, it could be, med it could be any one of those things. It's not necessarily, I have to do this mm -hmm. every single night, but it's just something that fits in that category. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you, it, that can be tough. Um, for me, I just need to find a place to put my devices. It is a little bit more challenging when, when we work in the evening, you know, I don't get home until we don't get home till about seven 30, um, seven 30 ish. So you're kind of setting yourself up for the next day. That's what I do. And then, um, you know, just trying maybe having, having a bite to eat, um, which is tough eating that late. Um, I like to have a cup of tea before like a relaxation type of tea before bed, but I also, I don't want to stay up all night to use the bathroom. Right. So that's, that's hard when you, when, especially after a night of coaching, like we're using our voices, we're feeling pretty dehydrated. I don't know about you. Maybe I, maybe I just I, talk I too much. So much of these during, during mm. workout sessions. I'm just always drinking water. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I talk. So, too much, I guess. Yeah, I, I think people would agree with. Uh, well, they I don't. They would definitely say I talk too much, and they'd like to. Uh, they'd like that to change. But, um, so nighttime routine. Mine, mine. I, I, I. Something I can definitely work on. Um, in in terms of of to dos, what are some good uh, good to dos? Well, number one, uh, caffeine too late will affect your sleep. We've talked about that. Um, so kind of have a caffeine cutoff earlier in the day. Uh, sometimes I struggle with that. Right. Um, alcohol, alcohol, alcohol affects your sleep. Um, so just kind of have rules around those. Um, and then you need to figure out what is your ideal wake up time. So if we know how much sleep we need, so let's just say seven to nine hours of sleep, um, just count back from there. What is our, what is our ideal wake up time? You, that, that will tell you when you need to go to bed. Um, and that, and that just kind of simplifies it. Um, and then, um, have some, you talked about, have some unwind time, have some time to unwind for better sleep. It's important to not do that critical thinking late at night. It's important to unwind, to relax. Cause you're, cause if you don't, if you're, if you're, your mind stimulated, right. Your sleep quality is going to suffer. And then, uh, ditch the devices because we know blue light, it messes with sleep quality. Um, in terms of relaxing activities, it could be just some, some simple conversation, uh, with a roommate or, 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 you know, I guess I could talk to my wife. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, I do talk to her. Um, this is on Facebook live, so that's good. Um, <laughs> hopefully she doesn't watch this, uh, <laughs> some fun reading, uh, just some reading. Um, I recommend, you know, I, I, I don't always fall into this, but have, yeah, I, I usually have about two books going on at once you know, kind of more of a fun read and then more of like a, a personal development, professional development type of one. I would stick more to um, the fun read, just kind of, kind of, so you don't really have to think, um, you know, other activities, stretching, yoga, meditation, just something to unwind. Um, where are some struggles, big struggles when it comes to both of these? Well, for, for us, we, we don't have kids. So kids can get in the way a little bit. Um, but we work late, we have crazy hours. So, you know, you're going to have struggles, you're going to have obstacles, but, um, you, you can go to bed early. You can go to bed early. You can, um, uh, work on your sleep. You can get your morning routine. Um, if you have kids, if you have a business, if you're in school, um, those are excuses because, um, if you make your health a priority and it should be, um, 
if you're, you're, you know, little kids keep you up at night, you just need to adapt. If your work schedule varies, you need to adapt. If you work late every night, adapt. Um, you know, that just is what it is. Um, the statistics show when we talk about sleep, you know, in terms of if there's less sleep, there's less productivity. So regular sleep, they say between seven and eight hours. If you get between five and six hours, you're 19% less productive. If you get five hours or less, you're 29% less productive. Um, another, another number, a study showed that sleep-related productivity loss is $1,900 per employee per year. I mean, you know, $1,900, imagine you got, you know, a company of 500 people. That can add up. If you're a small business with five people, I mean, that can add up big time. Um, so that's just from sleep related loss. And then um, less sleep also may, means you're more, more dangerous, right? So National Highway Administration, you know, because of sleep attributes 1500 deaths and 100,000 crashes each year to um, sleep, sleep deprivation. Um, and then, then a, a study also showed, you know, that costs, 2010 study, $15 million in direct costs and, and $100 million in indirect costs. So that is a lot of money um, and, it, and it can be dangerous. So, um, you know, when it comes to morning and nighttime routine, guys, they kind of go together. They kind of go together. One feeds into the other. Um, and, and, you know, it starts with nighttime. And then if you have a good nighttime routine, get a good night's sleep get a good morning routine, you're gonna be unstoppable during the day. Um, how do we make it realistic? Well, you start with one thing. If your morning routine, nighttime routine suffering, you need to start with one thing and just hammer that down. That's all you need to do. Don't try to fix, you know, change a hundred different things. Start with one thing. Number two, track it, track it. So you can check it off. And then number three, I'd say, just put the damn device away, find a way. I need to do that. I need to do that. Put the damn device away, whether it's putting it across the room, um, whether it's throwing it out in the snow, while well, there's no snow, whether it's throwing it outside. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Although some days I'd like to, you know, you don't really, I mean, it's just a phone, right? It's just a phone. One so, thing that, uh, I find that helps me a lot uh, with my routine that um, the big thing was start with one thing. I, I emphasize, emphasize that. That's uh, that's huge. You, like you said, you only got so much time in the morning. Um, if you say, say you want to start like meditating in the morning, you want to start working out in the morning, you want to start all this stuff. I'd say start with the easiest one, get that down. Yes. Then after you got it down, it, it doesn't feel like work for you anymore. Add another one. And then, and then just kind of see how it feels and then and just keep going from there, doing one at a time, even if it's like doing one for a week or a month. And then once you got that down, add that other one. Cause I, I, what happens is, is you're like, oh, I'm so ready. Maybe you're watching this. You're going, you're going, like, I'm scheduled. I'm getting ready for a great morning routine. I'm going to get this done, this done, this done. And then you're going to wake up and you're going to crush it tomorrow. I know you are, but that next day you're going to be like, that was a lot. That was a lot. Yep. So when you're waking up in the morning, you're going to be, that's a little more difficult, but it makes it a little easier if you gradually put yourself into it, starting with that one thing, going through with it for the week, getting it down pat, going yeah. on with another thing. And then kind of um, in the book, we just wrote Atomic Habits, you start doing uh, habit stacking. you doing that one habit, leads into the next one, leads it to the next one. Um, and so, and so having, uh, just stacking one thing from the other, that's, that's an awesome way to do it right there. Another yeah. thing that really helped me, um, when I first started getting a good routine down was actually scheduling this. We've talked about this quite a few times. Um, but, um, I know some people, uh, may, might've got a little anxiety when you saw Adam's uh, calendar there when he shared it with you guys, but, uh, but, uh, um, it really does help. You, you take your morning, like from, from in the Google calendar, your phone calendar, whatever it is, just say, I'm waking up at this point, schedule it in. You have no other option but to do it. And then right after that, I'm done at, I start at this time. I start at, I don't know, four in the morning. I'm, I'm waking up and doing meditation until 4.15. And then 4.15 comes, I'm starting to make breakfast and do this for another 30 minutes. Once that ends, you're going next one. Getting and getting those notifications on your phone. If your phone is around, hopefully it's not. But if it is, you see it and you're like, all right, a reminder, I got to get on to the next one. Um, and that was something that was huge for me when I first started this. I set my meditation time. I set my workout time. I set my food time. I set my prep for the day time. And that just set me up so well. And, and I, and 
I, I definitely still have a good morning routine. It could be better. I will say that I got yeah. a ton of room to still improve. Um, and so for me, this is a point in my, in my time where I probably should go back to that calendar and revisit it and kind of make some adjustments to kind of fit my schedule better. So if you, that's another tip I could give out there just to, just to, uh, if you guys are, are struggling setting that calendar up or you have already come back to it, adjust it, whatever you got to do. Yeah. I don't know if you can Absolutely. Add that, but. No, that's good. Yeah. It's important to have a calendar. Obviously you don't have to be as crazy as I am, but um, you know, that helps me structures my day. Um, I will say one more thing. If you do, do the, go the calendar route and do that, create some, some buffer time in there um, just because not everything will run over. It just happens. So just kind of, don't over, I, I'm a classic over planner. Um, so, you know, it can be frustrating if you, you don't get to something, but um, I, I've started to put in some more um, gaps, just downtime. Um, so that, uh, that certainly helps, but um, any questions? I don't think we have any questions, but if, uh, if anyone wants to, if anyone has a question, if anyone, um, you know, has needs anything, please uh, you can comment. Um, definitely comment and we'll uh, we'll answer it. So that's what we got. Morning and nighttime routine. Make it happen. They go together. And uh, trust me, if you get those locked in, if you if you even if you just get a little bit better, it can make a world of a difference. So that's what we got. Awesome, guys. Thanks for joining us. And for those of you that are watching this later on, thank you. And we'll uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. See you guys. See you guys.